And action. And welcome, everybody. This is BNP Weekly, episode 224. Uh, it is 13th of October. No idea why I'm doing that. Uh, it's 13th of October. <laughs> 13th of October, 2023. Uh, needed to pay attention on that one. Um, and in the BNP Weekly, we'll talk about the latest Microsoft 365. We typically have a visitor within the show as well, except when we started. I think we had two episodes without a visitor. And then we realized that there's nothing to talk with you. Well, that's right. So yes, it got boring, and then we need to words, actually. Yeah, get... by by ourselves, we're not entertaining uh, um, at all. So we thought, like, well, yes. yeah, we need to we need to bring somebody else on board because otherwise it's going to be just the real two stars. of us talking the whole time, and we talk already too much. So like, yeah, nothing good is going to come out of this. <laughs> that is true, or <laughs> that is so true. So. Um, my name is Sasha Yuvan, and I'm a principal product manager uh, in the Microsoft 365 platform areas. And with me as a co-host, Valdek, you are. Hey, everybody. My name is Valdek Mastigas, and I am Cloud Developer Advocate for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft. Excellent. Now, today uh, and for this week, uh, we have a Keith Atherson uh, joining as a uh, visitor. He is a Microsoft MVP, pretty recent one, and also a recent MCT. What is an MCT, Valdek? What is MCT? Microsoft Certified Trainer. I like how you like throw all tri trivia at me, I, I, <laughs> and I am just like vocabulary of Microsoft acronyms. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to throw a curveball. I'm just seeing whenever you crack. So, <laughs> what is an MVP? You have to what do better than that. <laughs> That's true. Oh no. Uh, and MVP is the Microsoft uh, most valuable player. I Microsoft. What is it? Microsoft most valuable professional. <laughs> Dude, I know. <laughs> no. Well, in NBA and NHL, you they should, have MVPs. You should so. know, all people, of all people. I know, I know. I know. No, you I don't. Know. <laughs> no, yeah, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, Keith, Keith works from Scotland, and we talk, talk about his history uh, and the background and transitions and what he's working on and the work on the community side uh, within this interview, which is already recorded. So let's actually jump on that interview. And we'll come back on the <laughs> weekly articles right after that. Excellent. Welcome, Keith, on joining on the PMP a weekly episode 224. Uh, so, uh, Keith, let's start with the basics. Uh, immediately, I'm jumping on the topics. Who are you and what do you do for a living? Sure. Why are you uh, here? Good afternoon. Uh, well, that's a very big question. Oh, uh, thanks for the invite. <laughs> that's why I'm yes. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm Keith Atherton. I'm a software developer. Um, uh, I've been doing this for maybe over 20 years, just over 20 years uh, it is now as well. So, yep, I'm originally from England. I've moved around a bit. I'm now based in Scotland. Um, but, yep, I work for a consultancy based in Scotland uh, called Quorum. And uh, it's mostly Power Platform work, but also Azure, .NET, and anything else that's required for the clients as well. Cool. So, isn't Scotland part of the England? No, just kidding. Just kidding. No, we're just too <laughs> soon. Already, <laughs> already with the content. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> now, you've been twenty years in in IT business. What have you done before? Right now, you're in the top of the you know the technology adaptation and power platform and and Azure and all of that. But what's your background? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, well, originally where I started um, was. Uh, when I went to college, I actually took a physics degree. It wasn't an IT degree. But when I got to the end of that, I realized that um, programming was something that I was passionate about, that I really enjoyed. <clears throat> so the first role that I got was for a consultancy based in London. And that was mostly uh, Microsoft technologies. So there was some VB6 uh, back in the time, uh, .NET. Hey. There was the, the preview version. Then it, it became more involved. So really, for most of my career, it was uh, Microsoft technologies, lots of SQL Server, um, sometimes the odd other technology like Java, Oracle, uh, whichever was required as well. Some technologies to be able to create mobile apps. But for the most part of the career, it has been .NET, SQL Server, uh, and, and kind of surrounding technologies. And really, just in the last few years, there was a move more towards, uh, for me in a new job, uh, using the Power Platform, Azure, a lot more cloud-based, a lot more, uh, you know, some may say modern technologies as well, which is something I've been after for a few years. So it's it's really kind of evolved in the last uh, two to three years for me. Yeah, makes perfect sense. And when you think about it, so I, I actually come from the similar, let's say, time frame and a background with VP4, VP5, VP6, and SQL Server 5.5 and all of that back in 
way back in time, uh, but it's 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 funny to kind of notice that the themes are still the same. Uh, so having that kind of a background, even on something like SQL Server and writing PowerShell uh, uh, procedures and, and all of that stuff, TSQL, you actually deal with similar kind of things in a, a bit different format in Power Platform or even in Excel, when you think about TSQL, it's it's basically then in SQL, Excel, we adapt that the formulas and all of that stuff. So it's funny how the the technology is evolving, but it's not evolving. The the things what we are kind of addressing and, and doing are still the same. Uh, or VP6, you know, drawing boxes, click a button, what will happen? Well, that sounds like a power app, doesn't it? Exactly. You know, it's funny you mention that because I was showing someone the other day from uh, the data team where I work. It was like a primer with Power Apps. Um, it was just maybe 30 minutes and it was exactly as you say. They, they said, oh, I did uh, wind forms back in the day. It's just like that, drag and drop, right? You know, then we add the event handles behind the scenes that do the actions when you click the button or when you select a row or whatever you do. And it, it really is, as you say, gone back to some uh, you know, using some intuitive uh, drag and drop WYSIWYG, if you will, you know, with this old, we're going to, let's drop all the terms, right? WYSIWYG, yeah. um, if you know, to just pull things together very easily. And as you say, when you deal with SQL Server, .NET, many other languages, it's also how you deal with that data. How am I going to filter yep. and sort the data? It's almost, you know, you could see uh, parallels within um, Transact SQL, as well as in .NET and many other languages, as well as with PowerFX as well. So, so many things do have the parallels, have many uh, concepts in common. Uh, yep. That is an interesting point, right? Because like, if you if you look across the years, uh, especially in the Power App space, we simplify a lot, right? Like that thing is ta ta targeted at um, um, makers who aren't as who aren't fully fledged devs in a way, like they not only aren't... for makers, not only for makers. Well, but but it's, it's the primary audience. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that, that if you are for somebody now. else, you are you are not allowed to use it, right? But that is kind of the primary sure. audience. But like coming from the background where in the past, like you used to do everything, like you build SQL queries, you optimize them, you build indexes, you know that stuff. I can imagine that there's a huge, huge advantage knowing how things actually work behind the scenes so that you can think about it and think in the ways like even in a simple thing like like a power app to optimize your work so that the app will work fast. But that isn't the case for folks who don't have the background that you do. How, how do you see, let's say, less technically advanced users benefiting from power platform in their work? And how do they find the balance with how much do they how how, how much te tech they need to know in order to be able to build apps that work great? Yeah, well, that's, that's a good question. It is. It's a great <laughs> question. Um, I think there's so many things where I can see the Power Platform in general almost. Uh, you know, and Charles Lamana mentioned this really well in the the uh, Microsoft Power Platform conference recently, where the intention is that it democratizes the use of technology. So a bit like Excel and PowerPoint, where if you see, as you say, you know, sitters and makers or developers to very highly technical people, it crosses a much broader range. So it is accessible to many more people. As you say, that's the really good news. You know, if, if, if I'm building something for a client, I can then hand over to that client, maybe have a few workshops and scale them up or provide them that learning material. They can take on, you know, at least the basics, at least the fundamentals to get started but maybe not you know digging deep into the power effects or using the new user defined functions or anything else that comes out that adds a bit more power to that you maybe that's down the line for them but in a way having things like the auto tuning behind the scenes in dataverse things where it is taken care of for the citizen makers and for the users there is something to be said for that but yeah as you say sometimes there are times that I, you know i really wish i could add an index here or a compiler hint there <laughs> But then there are all the tricks we can use. So yeah, I, I'm glad it's open for all. But there are there are challenges there for sure. And do you have like if you you could give uh, makers or uh, citizen devs top of mind three tips? What how can they ensure that the apps that they build work great? That's also a great question. Uh, there's so many things. I think learning the fundamentals gave me a really good uh, starting point. Um, and, you know, by taking something like a PL900, the Power Platform Fundamentals, or even just a course, there's still that really great free course on Udacity, the, the, the Microsoft one with Donna Sarkar and many others 
walking people through things. That could be a good starting point. Say, what does it do? How do I use it? You know, kind of get yep. those fundamentals. So I think that's a really, really good starting point. A, a big part of designing solutions, whether it be an app, whether it be something else as well, it could be a power virtual agent, it could be an approval flow, you know, it could, it could it doesn't necessarily have to be an app. Um, a really good thing with that is just seeing what's the user experience like, you know, can they walk through this? Is it intuitive to use? You know, it's like, not like back in the day we were talking earlier, like having a big user manual, or oh, you need to go through this to understand how to use this <laughs> thing. You know, can users pick up and, and play? You know, is, is it good to go straight away? So I'd say that's another an, another useful tip. Um, and I think something else uh, is maybe not the, the, you know, the most fun topic, but having things like a good documentation. You know, if you've recorded what's been done, how it's been built, how you extend it going forward, you know, you may, want, you may move on from that role to another role. You, you know, yep. you might leave the organization. Someone else might want to pick it up and learn about uh, the Power Platform themselves. That can go a really long way, uh, you know, so people understand how it's been built and how they can modify it going forward. Yeah. And of course, the documentation can be also in a video format if you don't have time to write it in a written format, because again, doing a few videos explaining this is what I was thinking as I was creating this and, and saving and that. Every single time you change the app, you need to re record the whole thing because it's out of that's true as well, but do you, depends on an app and how many changes do you do. Now, and as we were, as we were talking about the, you know, the, the powering the end user, empowering the makers and, and getting more make to people to be more makers and builders as well, um, is, can we go as far as say, for example, at some moment of a time, if you think about PowerPoint, um, nobody was really that skillful for doing presentations but now we are we are able to actually use the designers and tooling and everything else in powerpoint and um, the power it's just a coincident on the on the name uh, but it's basically we are empowering um, more broadly people to do to, to presentations and at some time time, time uh, you were using professionals and then that kind of that job and the market well, partly disappeared because everybody was in part to do beautiful looking powerpoints is it almost like the same thing with power, uh, power platform how do you feel that? Yeah, I think we could potentially see it go that way. I wonder if it used to be the same with Excel, certainly back Correct. in the day yes, as well. You know, absolutely. so many people just you can can type into cells. That's a starting point. But so many use those formulas, which again parallels with Power FX there as well. Yep. Um, to you know, I've even been schooled years ago in how you do the conditional formatting or how you insert tables and change things. Yep. So yeah, I suspect as you know, as adoption grows and has the, the maturity of the platform grows over time as well. I can see more people getting involved, getting hands-on, you know, spinning up a, an Excel spreadsheet could be like, you know, spinning up a power app going forward potentially. Yep, yeah. Now, is there a risk? Um, so is there also a risk that when we kind of say that the power platform is, you know, the best flexible, whatever, suitable for every other thing, then, it's basically the hammer and everything is a nail. And then we'll say power platform, power platform, power platform. Now you touched Keith the, the, in your intro also that you do other stuff as well, not just the power platform. So what, what, how do you do that? How do you decide what goes to the power platform and doesn't go to the power platform? Is there a kind of, a, are you seeing a more about this? Everything is a power platform. You don't need anything else, uh, which <laughs> isn't necessarily always true. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. You know, it really can, it, I'm not going to use it depends. You know, I'm not going to fall into that you know, cliche as a consultant <laughs> and say that, but it could be, there are so many factors. You know, if the client's already using Azure, they've got familiarity. If they're already using AWS or they're using something else, they want something to fit within that ecosystem. And many of us are aware that the Power Platform is built on many Azure services, you know, the Dataverse and many other parts. Um, that's why you see so many parallels with power automate flows and logic apps. So it, yep. it could be that, do we need to dig a bit deeper under the, 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 under the hood, under the bonnet technically and reach that Azure layer? Do we need to use things like plugins? Do we need to use some code first or pro code options like this? It could really be, you know, what we think is, is, is the best fit. But again, I think leveraging those skills, if it's going to be handed over to a client, are they willing to upskill with power platform? If it is the best fit, if not, I, I've worked with many clients where they are <clears throat> very skilled with .NET and other kind of code first uh, languages. Often that could be the good first fit, but then maybe approval flows could be a good addition as well. Or, you know, a Power BI report because they, you know, they just use 
.NET charts at the moment or something, but they want to kind of expand that, use some of the AI capabilities. So it can really feel, you know, what's the best fit for that solution and what skills have they got and, and how willing are they as well to kind of adopt new technologies and learn new skills as well. Yeah. So I and I, I guess also an, an, an interesting point because you could take a stance where say in a time where building an app required you to have a punch card and enter and and a very time. Old, I mean there, there was a time yeah. where, where <laughs> building an app was that. Like it was True. something, you know, bespoke and unique and definitely not, not available to masses. Now now it is. Right. So in a time back then when building apps was was expensive and hard, you, you could say fewer apps have been built because it was so hard and expensive. Now, as you say, as technology evolves and is more approachable to a bigger audience, does that mean that we will have more apps around us? And if so, what does that mean? What does that mean for governance, you know, data management, access management, productivity? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a really good point. And there's, there's been some really good developments by people I know in terms of the ecosystem recently. As you say, the governance, the adoption or nurturing, uh, depending on the term, how we guard things as well. Because, you know, Excel spreadsheets can be used in many organizations, sometimes in lieu of an app. You know, it's gone from paper to there, maybe next. Um, but yeah, with Power Apps uh, or any part of the Power Platform, there is the danger if we can use a connector to connect to any part of a data set, could be a live service, a production database. There is the risk of doing uh, wild things, you know, that could have serious repercussions. Um, in fact, a friend of mine did a really good blog series recently on data loss prevention and how you can use these DLP policies to lock things down, enable access to data, only the data you're comfortable with, or by having isolations, you know, so a citizen maker can only access their own developer environment, they can only access these services, or the you know the list of users in the Office 365 connector. So there are ways we can maybe lock things down, but maybe think of that from the start, have a safe environment, good guardrails, so people can play freely, so they also don't get stressed or worried that they may break something or impact a live service as well. So yeah, I think it's all about uh, you know, uh, making sure everyone feels safe and they can, they can play, with the, play with the new toys. Yeah. yeah. And I guess you Keith said it really well on the previous question, actually, that it's not just about writing the solution. It's also about the implication of the solution and the continuity of the solution. So the, the responsibility is technically the responsibility of the developer might end whenever the solution has been handed over. However, the implications of the solution just start when somebody starts using that. And then there's a multi-year potential return of investment for the solution and it's being used. And we need to think through what does it actually mean from a change management perspective and data access and, and that perspective as well. So there's, there's a, regardless that it's easy to do the actual buttons and actions and all of that stuff, um, there's a lot of additional considerations to be in place. So. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. But to be fair, I related on that one on the, on the buttons and everything else. Last Thursday, uh, I can't remember, there was a Jeffrey Dent. Uh, I don't keep where you actually on the call on Thursday, last Thursday, not sure. But there was this absolutely brilliant at and solution which been was done uh, and it's a really awesome customer storyline how they modernized and and basically delegated the responsibility of taking screenshots of their uh, vehicles to the drivers and and basically using mobile phones with a power app they were able to detect Additional details related on live uh, the, the the graphics and everything else in the in the in the cars and all of that stuff. And it's it's just a brilliant example of a simple solution, but then empowering actually end users super easily to do much more and and super valuable for customers as well. So I love that. I think that sounds great. Jeffrey Dent. Yeah, I I need to double check that. We'll put it in the in the video notes. And that was absolutely brilliant. Like oh my god, this is such a cool use case for the Power Platform as well. So. Awesome. Good, good. Um, now, you are also an MVP, uh, right, Keith? Yes, that's right. I've been a, a business applications uh, MVP, uh, and that was in June this year. So first year oh, for me right. being an MVP. Cool. Cool. Yay. So Thank you very much. Good. What has changed? <laughs> what has changed since you became an MVP? Oh, so much. Uh, Everything. You know, it's been great because I, I, it's been great to meet other MVPs. Um, you know, when you do become part of the program, 
many of us are aware that you do get access to you know, um, some of the product teams. There are some benefits as well. But I think just being part of a great community where so many other people share so much information, you know, it's, it's one of the reasons I think that led me to the program as well, which was just a very pleasant surprise when I was nominated by uh, by someone that I knew, was just, you know, getting out there, giving uh, either giving presentations, giving talks, uh, co-organizing events. And it's really just grown and grown because it's things I love doing and so many other people do too. And I think it's just naturally, you know, led to that lovely surprise, which was getting the award. Uh, but no, since then, I've really just carried on the, the same path of just trying to do more, uh, create some PMP samples, uh, do more speaking. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's been a really good program to be part of, and it's been very warm and welcoming from for, for people as well. It's been really good. Yeah, it's it's good that you didn't just like checkbox and dropped everything and walked away. <laughs> you know, so, because that has happened actually. That uh, every now and then there are those people who are basically doing it for the sake of done it uh, and moving forward. Uh, well, I mean, like if, if that is your goal and you attain it, well, then it's kind of imaginable true. that you've true. done it for the. For that being a goal by itself, as opposed to that, that that just being you know a milestone, but journey is about sharing the expertise and trying to help others, as opposed True. to attaining a uh, an award. True. Exactly, it's, it's almost considering is this a sustainable thing that I want to be doing, or is as you say, I've just I've just climbed Everest, I've ticked it, I've done it, I won't do it again, uh, and it may be different for everyone. For me. When people have asked me about the award, I've often said, if you do what you love, if you put the time in and you, you really enjoy, you really enjoy sharing the knowledge and so many other people share it with me, you know, and I, that's what kind of led me to giving presentations in the first place. That if you do those things and you really enjoy it, you put the time in and you help others, you know, you, you pay it back, then good things will come. Maybe the MVP award or some other award or something else might be one of those good things that come of it. Um, it may be something else. It might be being um, asked to write a book. It might be asked to, you know, uh, uh, join a company in a new role. It could, it could be anything really. But for me, MVP was one of those uh, very pleasant surprises that came along. Yeah. Do you actually want to write a book? Just saying. Just rethink that. <laughs> it's an honest thing. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. What's the offer? Uh, what would you like? <laughs> <laughs> Well, like how many years were you an MVP? Just out of curiosity, 12. that was pretty long time. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah, so that's pretty long time as well. So yeah, yeah. and things have changed a have lot done... since then. Yeah, that's true. You must have done something good during that time. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> of course you did. Of course you did. But you know, things like writing a book or, or taking things on would appeal. Would appeal. It would be a fun thing to do. A one thing yep. you know that that's important to me with whether it be the MVP award or. or helping in the community is about getting the right balance as well not taking too much sure. on get it getting a good healthy level and a healthy balance yes. it's still something i'm working on to be honest but um yeah if it was to write a book and if it was a you know a 12 12 month process or a bit of a big thing to take on it'd probably be something i'd have to uh, you know wait what time do i have free could i do this but sure. yeah that, that would appeal for the future well, yeah, that... but, but, but but then you would probably not do something else and that might mean that you would drop off the grid for eight months or nine months that yeah. that you would ride because you wouldn't have any time left to do other things so that has to be a deliberate choice on your part to say i want to do do this especially now in a world where you know, things change every week. Writing a technical book is really hard, right? Because like by the time it's out, it's out of date. Yes, yeah, absolutely right. And uh, there was a similar, a similar offer for something for me recently, and it was the same mindset of if I do this and it becomes my full time, takes over all of my spare time that I'm willing to spend, uh, you know, outside of the day job and family life and everything else. As you say, it may be well. I'm not speaking. I may need to. You know, have a break from the user group that I co-organize with two other great people. I might need to do less blogging, less this, less that. And it felt like it may be uh, almost an all or nothing on my time. Um, so yeah, it is It is a big commitment and something to, to think about for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's actually really important what you said uh, also there is that finding the right balance because, you know, getting an MVP and, and quite often, especially, well, I can, I can relate on that when I was a bit younger, you, you just 
get on doing so many stuff and you're doing a bit too much and all the time and maybe i do a bit too much still uh watching wild i care no, just kidding. Uh, but it's it's uh it's it's one of those things we only have 24 hours uh, in a day and funny enough you can actually feel it uh easily on on doing you know these kind of things and the work and the balancing the life and all of that stuff and and it shouldn't get to you um i think finding that right balance like keith you were saying related on mvp is this that if you try if you contribute and as part of the things what you love to do it's not actually a tax it's not taking energy of you you're actually getting energy out of that and that's i think is the the key uh different and, and the right mindset that's a really good way of putting it as well seeing is it a tax or a cost or a job so yep. again you know if someone was aiming for that award or, or any other kind of award you know the other programs out there too um if this is nothing but a hard slog and you're not enjoying it because you want those three letters, it's maybe worth having a think about that uh, rather than, hey, I just love doing this. And it just so happens I've been lucky enough to be nominated or things yeah. have headed that way. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a good way to, uh, you know, to uh, think about things for sure. What would be your kind of a tips on, uh, we're always asking tips. Um, they're also interesting to kind of mention on this. What, what's the, what would be your tips on getting the MVP status? How do you? How do I get that? Well, let's see. I mean, Waldox, Waldex had 12 years, so uh, yeah. Yeah. I may not be the expert here, but... Uh, <laughs> Time has think... changed since ever he joined Microsoft, so he's, you know... Yeah. I know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, one thing that I've really enjoyed is uh, getting more involved with the tech community is the first starting point for me was giving presentations. So I saw someone give a presentation. Uh, they they were an IoT MVP and still are. And they did a really cool one where they had a robotic arm and it was controlled with, with the web app and they used Blazor and SignalR. And it was awesome. It was great. It was fun. It wasn't like a dry walkthrough uh, you know, of some tech task. It was a kind of fun, interesting thing. So that inspired me to give a presentation and push myself because public speaking, getting out there doesn't come naturally to me. And I thought, well, this is a bit like going on a roller coaster. You know, this is a challenge. You know, are you, you, you're going to try this. So I thought, okay, let me give this a go. Let me think of a topic. It's got to be fun. I've got to, you know, kind of come up with a few ideas. Pitched one, and that was the first one I did. I actually really enjoyed the experience. Just as you, you said, Vesa, you've got energy from it. Really enjoyed it. It energized me and it pushed me as well out of my comfort zone. So ever since doing that and just getting the, you know, the hunger for it and doing more and more, I've also then expanded and tried lots of other things. So that'd be blogging, uh, co-organizing user groups, um, you know, volunteering for conferences. There's so many things that I've done along the way, and I've tried to do lots and lots of different things to see what clicks for me. So if that's the thing I really enjoy, and as you say, I, I'm, I'm very busy, maybe too busy, because so many of them do appeal. They're all fun, so it's hard. Uh, to, <laughs> yeah, sure. It's it's hard to filter that list down to uh, just a core few at the moment. But because I've enjoyed doing all these things, it's naturally helped me network with other people, meet yeah. some of these heroes of mine who've inspired me to give presentations, and meet them and realize they're just regular people like you and I. Uh, they're just lovely yeah. people, and you know, learn more from them. And you know, they, they may come back to you and say, "Oh, actually." We've had a speaker drop out for next month. Can you cover? Oh, we need more help organizing this event. Can you help? Things yeah. then just naturally occur, even if you don't ask for them. If you do, that can help too. But if not, I think getting out there, learning more, seeing what appeals for you. And if you find your passion, you find your fit, that's a good place to spend your time uh, and your efforts as well. Uh, and again, that just kind of helps getting involved enough that it's just giving the knowledge back and helping others. So it's uh, it just kind of works out really, really well. Yeah, and, and I, also I, the, the fact that all of that fits, all of that helps towards the in the MVP award, right? Because the MVP award is pretty broad. Like, in a way, everything counts, whether you write a book, organize a user group, blog, speak, do podcast, webcast, whatever you do, all of that counts, right? So yep. that, that is also a great thing that you don't have to do X. You can do whatever you want to do in a way that you enjoy it. And that makes it really more easily attainable over time, right? Because like otherwise, again, like you will burn yourself out trying to to achieve it. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. If you won't, you will burn out and then you will be, you know, this bitter person 
and they're like, oh, this is so bad. And it's and you will come up with all kinds of reasons for why things didn't align for you. But in reality, maybe that wasn't the right the right mindset. So maybe maybe instead do something that, that you love, so that that energy shows in all your work, and then great things will happen. Yes, I, I agree. And I think so many people can tell when it's authentic as well. If you're giving a talk and you're just reading from a script and it doesn't come from the heart, you're not enjoying it and you just you, you walk away the moment you've done. Yeah, I think people people are smart. People can tell that. Um, and also, if it is a hard slog and you want to renew every year, you're almost giving yourself another job just to keep the renewal, yeah. to keep this award. So, yeah, I think getting out there, trying different things, as you say, well, like, you know, there's so many different things that can count towards the award. Um, as well, you know, unpaid community contributions um, that just get out there, find your passion, find your fit. And, uh, you know, you'll enjoy the journey as well as, you know, if you do get to the destination as well. Yep. And, and I guess nowadays it's even easier because of the Internet and network and we're much more natural doing these kind of things as well. So we're able to have a presentation remotely from your home. You don't have to meet people. Uh, and all of that, because something like you said, uh, Keith, that it doesn't come naturally for you. I still get a lot of anxiety on doing presentations, even though I can force myself to do that, what? you know, live on a stage and all of that stuff. No, but it's I am not act. buying this. It's one hundred percent just an act. <laughs> Very well hidden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the eight years of consulting. Uh, you know, it, it teaches you up on well more than that, but anyway, eight years in Microsoft and the um, it, it teaches you up on you know handling that consulting and feeling or acting maybe i don't know so yes i think it's 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 not really acting it's when i go to the stage at least personally when i go to the stage it immediately goes away and then you're okay now execute so it's it's but the anxiety before is natural to build or not to build exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very familiar think, as well i think when yeah. I, you know when i give a talk as well i try not to overthink it i always get some of the butterflies just before yes. but once it's up and running and i try and enjoy it myself as well you know have fun yep. or people to yep. have fun as well it yep. just it can just dissipate right sure. yeah well sure. i mean i go about it in a different way where for me it's always like the minutes before i i go go on stage i mean like i've been around doing talks for many years now it's still there the moment yep. until i'm on stage and like the first minute or two is like why have I done that to myself again? It's like, I am not enjoying this at all. Like, why am I here? Never, ever do it. And then the moment I am done, adrenaline rush is like, oh my God, like you see folks nod. You see folks kind of appreciate what you shared, the learnings that you shared. You you, 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 you see it, uh, the faces, feedback, the cheers, and you're like, oh my God, like when can I do do another one? Yes. So it's Absolutely. very much bipolar in a way, like, Going from and one and on the next week, you're like, why did I say now yes to that one? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, not again, not another one. I just don't learn anything from this. <laughs> that's that's almost like back to the roller coaster or the skydive. You know, when you yes. when you're there, like, I'm about to jump up. You're on the a, a edge. Perfectly good airplane yeah, yeah. here. This yeah, yeah. this this isn't yeah. very smart. But yeah, when yeah. you're there, when you're doing it, when you land, you're like, I want to go back up. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then you are I remember that. That's exactly the, the same. Yeah, exactly. Oh God, why? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I think I, that, I did two times jumping on, on a personally with parachuting because I went through the course and two times that was enough. It's too, you know, you, that was a checkpoint, checkbox thing. But it's the, 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 when they open the door in the sky and you're like, you need to jump. It's like, no, what? Uh, this is no. natural. Yeah. This is <laughs> Everything in your body says, saying, no. don't do it. <laughs> then you know, when you jump, it's like, oh, and then you, it's just unbelievable. You cannot explain, you know, the the the, the rush on that one. But Absolutely. at the same time, it's it's almost the same as for definitely almost the same as for presenting. It's not necessarily as high natural in rush, but still. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. Depends on a person. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you, by the way, Keith, in the uh, Las Vegas? Uh, we didn't see, we didn't do a research. Were you in the Las Vegas two weeks ago? Uh, yes, weeks ago? Uh, I was actually. I was very lucky to be uh, Las Vegas uh, for uh, the Microsoft Power Platform Conference. That's what I thought. Yes. And uh, oh. yes, they, they covered very well there. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> as, you, as you well know. Um, but it was it was brilliant. Yeah, it was it was absolutely brilliant. Met some really awesome people. 
Um, there were some great sessions. I heard the workshops were, were really good too, uh, but I was there for the main three days of the conference. Uh, I was lucky, lucky enough to have a couple of speaking engagements myself as well. Um, so I was in the MVP showcase where I just did an Ask Me Anything, an AMA for half an hour, um, just about various things about the MVP award. Uh, I'm also a Power Platform super user, so I help on the forums and I co-run a user group as well. So really kind of they were the main three things that I discussed. Um, also, there was a really good sharing is caring session with David Warner, uh, April, Daniel, so many other people as well. So I was one of the people brought up as well, just to say how I get involved uh, with the community and how I've benefited from it as well. So yeah, it was a really great experience. I'd highly recommend anyone to uh, go to one of the big conferences if they if they can. Yeah, that was good. Good. Almost planned. That was almost like scripted, right? Right. So, yes. Exactly. Right. That was just sounds really good. Out the way. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Prompter away. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Paid advertisement. No. Exactly. Just kidding. Just kidding. But it, it, they say obviously you can't be part of the community without not being in these conferences. But the conferences they are. Yeah, they're different. Um, they're actually really great experiences. And and even though personally I'm not a big fan of Las Vegas, I've learned to you know enjoy the Las Vegas conferences. And or even Orlando is is well, it's not that nothing nothing. Orlando is not even close as Las Vegas, but still, it's so artificial. Uh, well, but, you know, you meeting can, you people. Can, like, when you are there, you can you can you can have as much Vegas and as little Vegas as you want. That's you true. can stay. That you can stay true. in hotel room the whole event. Yeah. And just go like, you know, blind on your eyes. True. Like this is this is your True. path. This is the walk to the event. True. Or you can immerse yourself in all the shows and whatever strip that is there True. and do things and yeah, yeah. choose yeah. choose your pick, right? Yeah. That's, That's true. 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 There was so That's much true. to do. I did catch a few good shows while I was there and. Again, spending time with other people was the highlight for me. Um, it yep. wasn't a conscious networking effect, but it, it, it maybe ended up being that way. But it was you know, going for meals with people, going to sessions with people, catching them exactly. in the breaks. Sometimes getting to know people so well, you maybe you overrun, you miss the next session, but it's all part of the fun of the conference. So True. yeah, if, if people could afford it, if they can make it, I would highly recommend it. So was Absolutely. it your first big, big event that you've, you've attended or have you done on Earth in the past? Yeah, that's a good question. So I was lucky enough to be at the the original Microsoft Power Platform conference last year in Orlando, um, yeah. which was was very lucky for me because I used to live in Florida, so I get to stay with friends and see friends when I go. Oh, so cool. that, that that landed just right. That was perfect. Right, right, um, right. So yeah, that that was a that was a really good one. Uh, this one and also the European Power Platform conference in Dublin. That was back in mm -hmm. June. Okay. Um, Again, I was lucky enough to do some speaking at that one as well, but it was great, again, just to meet people. You know, so many people came from North America as well and all over the True. world. That was great to see people from Microsoft, other MVPs, so many other people who do so much in the community. Um, so yeah, th those those three so far, the big conferences for me. Um, I'm hoping to go to MVP Summit as well um, later, uh, which will be next year. So yes. fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, definitely. Meet meet March should be good. Should be good uh, on that one as well. Now, final question before we start summing up: Why? Because we were just saying that. Why would you move from Orlando to Scotland? Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can imagine quite a few reasons. Well, yeah. Uh... But now October, November, you know, December start looking around. You're like, why on what? <laughs> yeah, the, the the rain's bouncing off the window at the moment. Uh, the sky's grey. Um, is that is that all the time we've got for today? Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, on that bombshell. <laughs> you said you were going to ask tough questions, but this isn't fair. <laughs> yes. um, so. Yeah, I was lucky enough. Uh, so uh, I've moved from England to Scotland uh, and then a job took me to uh, upstate New York for a few years uh, for the same company, moved to Florida, I was actually in Tampa, which I loved. Uh, I was in Tampa for a while. And then that was just on a visa. We, we did consider staying or, or moving back, but uh, so many friends and family and other reasons back in Scotland, we, we decided yeah. to move back. But I uh, have to say it was a very, a very tough decision. <laughs> yes. Especially in the you know early November, it hits you, and it's like, why? why? Yeah. The, the rest of the year in Florida, you get the humidity, the heat. It's not quiet, so it's like, yeah, like yeah, the other, okay. yeah, the other extreme. So it's like <laughs> maybe, maybe you need to like bounce between them 
part of the year there, part of the year here. Yeah, just, or, yeah, yeah, anyway. I could be a um, snowbird, actually. I do remember the palm trees with the, with the fairy lights and the fake snow sprayed on them. And I thought, <laughs> oh, I've got the real thing back home. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is not real. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, we always summarize the, the discussion on what's happening this week or within uh, upcoming week. Um, nothing NDA or anything like that, but just, just to share on anything interesting happening within your week this week, Kate. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a, a good question, actually. Um, so lots of interesting client work on at the moment. Um, it, lots of it being the Power Platform, some of it being Azure as well. It's still quite a mix for me at the moment. Um, I was lucky enough as well last week, uh, I did receive the, the Microsoft Certified Trainer Award um, uh, or certification rather. And some people have been asking me about how they can get involved, what courses they need to take. And, and I'm actually really enjoying just speaking with them and going through my journey because I've only recently just joined that that program. Uh, so I'm looking forward to helping a few people, maybe writing a blog on that as well. So if anyone else who's interested uh, knows where to go for that. So yeah, quite, quite a busy week ahead, I think. Also, uh, one last thing is um, tomorrow evening, um, the Scottish Power Platform User Group is holding a virtual event. So uh, yeah, we're looking for people to join. Um, we've got some great speakers on. So that's going to be a highlight of this week for sure. Cool. Very, very cool. We are releasing the podcast uh, tomorrow morning. Tuesday. So yeah, you can, yeah, that's there. Yeah. We can yeah, still promote that. Still still online. If you, <laughs> if you are yeah, exactly. with, with yeah. us directly from the release, you still might have an, an hour or two to join, yeah. Or maybe Fingers we'll crossed. publish this a bit earlier to Dan this week because I will be uh, doing daddy responsibilities on tomorrow and, and day after. So uh, I was well and told by wife to go to the uh, be the parent um, on the on oversighting of the kids uh, on a school trip, which is uh, looking so much forward on this. <laughs> so <laughs> bring a laptop. 20, 11 year old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, and if you're... I'm Yes, if I don't have any energy on Thursday, that's the reason. So I, I yeah. You with no energy, that that would be a first. Okay. <laughs> Never seen that in person. But yeah, let's see how it goes. And I, I, I've been just crossing fingers that the snow melts away because I didn't. Ha I, I booked my tra uh, uh, winter tire chains. Um, whatever reason was like calendar. You no, know, it's not gonna snow before whatever time, and not gonna schedule that until mid November, and it ran snow this morning and it's like really okay so of course you're still like 11 it's, 12 so there's I know no that, need for winter tires yet yeah and all melted away so it's all good but it's like i was just crossing fingers because it would be pretty awkward to go to the you know picking up the kids in the morning because i'm one of the drivers as well and, and heading to the to the thing i was like yeah you know summer that tires true uh, fun. Like you a, drift the whole way kids love it <laughs> yeah, exactly. oh, that would be awesome <laughs> <laughs> yes, the the best best the best car and me. Yes. <laughs> the <Yeah>. Finnish <laughs> rally driver. Oh, yeah, that's true. Finland just won the World, World uh, Rally uh, Championships again there this you year. Go. So, there Ooh, we go. Who needs winter <laughs> tires anyway? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Waldek? <laughs> uh, tomorrow being Tuesday, I am presenting. I'll actually be deploying a Microsoft Graph Connector live in 15 minutes. So, fingers crossed that, that, that that's going to work. Uh, so there will be uh, one, why is two. that an important thing? I'm going to trail in that one. Why, why the is craft that, connectors that, that say, important thing? Why, why is many, that now a important thing? Why, why are we now talking about craft connectors? So a uh, few things, right? So one is like in our work, we use all kinds of apps. And like the in, in info that we need for our work is stored within all these apps. And it's really hard to find because then you first need to know in which app it is. And oftentimes what we see is that search isn't core core feature of any of these apps because again like they are meant to help you you know manage uh, customers accounts whatever but not really do search so it's really hard, hard to find all the different things you need for your work so one with a connector you can ingest all of that to Microsoft 365 and use the powerful search that you have there to find uh, or to search through all of the content that you've got in your work uh, work and not just the files you create on Microsoft 365 so one two you can also uh, keep track of all the, the activities of all the content that you've got in, in those external apps, which helps uh, your colleagues discover new content that they wouldn't know otherwise about. And then three, another one, which is just around the corner, Copilot. It is. 
Yes. If you want it to assist you, it needs to be able to reason over all content that you've got in your, your um, workplace and not just the files you create again in Microsoft 365. So that it needs the access to that. And again, connectors are a way to bring that uh, um, content to it and let it reason over all info that you've got in your work, giving you more relevant a- answers. So with that, like that is why it's such a important to- topic because again, like we have all this info around us, but if we cannot find it, we will not work as effectively as we could. Yep. So that would be one, two. Somewhere during this week, we have upcoming release of CLI for Microsoft 365 with new features and improvements. So that that's coming too. Um, other than that, they will there will be a new article about uh, connectors on Microsoft 365 developer blog. So stay tuned for that. Um, what else is there? Um, I'm finishing a sample together with G- Gary about how you can use um, how you can simplify deploying graph um, connectors by deploying them as 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 a Teams app. So there's also like another great thing for uh, admins, not to have to, you know, have documentation of 20 pages, Word doc and cl- click this and do that. No, like, you, like yep. there is just a, to- a toggle that, that they can click and they will enable it, start ingestion and all of that. So that is really a great sample that uh, we were building that we hope to ship really, really fast because it's, a, it's again, a great thing to have as, as a reference. So TLDR, a lot of things going on. Yes. Cool. Now, I do apologize, Keith. Uh, we were targeting 30 minutes. Uh, we're now at 43 minutes <laughs> on the no recording. At all. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but thank you for joining on the PMP Weekly. Uh, really awesome discussion. It's it's nice to get to know you better. Uh, I'm sure that our, our paths will be uh, crossing multiple times within the upcoming years as well. So thank you, Keith, for joining. My pleasure. Great to meet you guys. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you. And right from here, we'll jump on the weekly articles together with Walde. Excellent. Thank you, Keith, one more time uh, on the great discussion. Uh, so good to catch up as well. Uh, and a lot of, lot of interesting and nuances. I, I already got the notes from Waldeck and there's so much stuff uh, written on the uh, what we covered within that, what was it, 45 minutes again? Yes, again, like we always aim for 30. We always spill. So maybe next time we need to aim for 20. That's probably so maybe then it will be you way know. to do that. Yeah, I guess so. Um, it's forcing, forcing functor. Forcing. English, forcing function. The Murphy's yes. law, like like do, it's going to it's going to take all the time you a lot to it. Yes, is it Murphy's definitely? Law? No, that's not Murphy's law. I think that's somebody else, else's law. Okay. Anyway, anyway, and there is a this... law. Like the, all the time you a lot to something is going to be taken. Yeah, and that makes it not my responsibility. It's the responsibility of that law, right? Yes, it's exactly. Exactly. Yes, yeah, it happens. <laughs> Cool. Let's jump on the weekly articles. Uh, so let me click from here and we'll flip on the weekly articles mode. So first of all, uh, on the Microsoft 365 blog side, uh, we have a new uh, blog post from Nikol Hersovitz related on Microsoft Teams Premium. The smart place for work is also smart investment. So basically explaining the values and uh, the return of investment uh, for the Teams uh, uh, Premium. And that this is by far far my best feature in the Microsoft 365 right now, uh, the meeting summaries, they are incredibly good. Um, so, and it's actually really, really awesome, awesome stuff. Um, Maybe on a little note, like how many meetings do you have in your calendar? Too many. You need to use <laughs> summary without you being able to attend it. Too, too many. Uh, whatever okay. reason I'm getting asked on always, like, can you help on this? Or you're not responsible, but we would love to get your input. It's like, sure, but I can't. It's just, no. I think I had a... TLDR. Uh, the, what was it? There was a weird, uh, you know, triple, quadruple, but there was seven uh, overlapping meetings for one slot um, a week wow. ago. So that's that's kind of hard <laughs> to choose on which one to actually take. And I, I guess the one of them was actually a meeting which I was leading. So it's kind of logical that I took So that. I would not attend this one. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> But it's complicated, and and I, I I get it. I've been working for a long time in Microsoft, and, and and you know we have you've been long time community member. People value the input what you have, even though you wouldn't be leading those decisions. Uh, so, and people want and and it's a nice 
you know, appreciation as well, having those things. But oh, yeah. it also means that you cannot actually join all of them. And re recapping uh, and listing all of the recordings, unfortunately, that's not an option as well, because, you know, you, you, you still just don't, need to... don't have time. Correct, correct. Uh, so these are absolutely great. So, and a lot of lot of other stuff. This one is actually kind of funny as well. It's just quickly showing this new engagement analytics. So we've been uh, having a competition with David uh, on who has more engagement in some of the community calls, and it's actually kind of funny numbers there. So, ah, that's cool. Because you can actually do that, and why wouldn't you appreciate whatever people are presenting or saying and, and reacting on them? So, you know cool stuff but this is actually kind of interesting as well so you, you get nice. all of that insights related on uh, reactions and how people are reacting but a lot of other, other stuff in the team's pre uh, premium so thank you nicole for the cool. update on that one now then a uh, few kind of a uh, blog posts uh, from the microsoft 365 and teams and we got through the official blog so discover and assign microsoft 365 extra features license uh, so this is actually pretty interesting um there's a new functionality is in in e3 and you should be considering uh, which of those and how you're assigning them and how do you actually use them within your uh, tenant. So super important thing to maximize the value of the E3. Um, I guess that this comes from the fact that we've been realizing that, well, we're rolling out features, but then people are not necessarily even aware, which comes back on the communication, communication, yeah. communication, 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 communication. We already shifted. When? Last year. What? Who? What is this? <laughs> Basically the same way. Like if you are in are in the or if 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 a tree fell and nobody was there, did it fall? Correct. The exactly. Same thing. Exactly. We shipped the license. We didn't yes. tell anybody. Yes. Have we shipped it? Well, but but there is uh, that's not a the, the good thing to remember that it's not because people wouldn't want people to know. It's not because people don't you know uh, want people to use the features. It's just that they're not aware of the fact that they are supposed to communicate or that the fact that it's you're submitting something in GitHub is not enough. Uh, so it's well, just educating yeah. people on you know, well, communicating more efficiently. It's not like we've got a mailing list, all users at Microsoft 365. No, oh, we don't. We don't? We do? We do? Yeah. yeah, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool. How many people again? Quite a few. I don't know, all <laughs> so, of them. Yes, and that would be a, a some sort of a violation of something for sure. So definitely not, <laughs> not a deal. What no. we have. Now, organize the components in your diagrams with layers in Visio for web. And we've been having uh, updates on the Visio side, which again, Visio team has heard about communicate, communicate, communicate. So they're actually communicating uh, and sharing updates on, on capabilities. And this is really smart, again, uh, from their team explaining new features. Layers and there's Visio. layers. So you're able to now do uh, layering of things and hide layers as well. That's actually really, That's really cool. cool. Uh, as an old Adobe Photoshop user. So. How long will it be until we have layers in PowerPoint? That is a good question, actually. That's say, why don't we have layers in PowerPoint? That's actually. I have to think really immediately, right? Because like, as you draw all of these diagrams in PowerPoint, I, 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 I do. Like, that was my instant <laughs> thought. Like, hey, Vesa would really appreciate that. <laughs> True, true. Thank you. <laughs> Me and my drawings. Anyway, so, <laughs> but this is actually really, really cool. That's, by the way, PowerPoint layers. That's definitely a thing what we need to uh, push on. Now, uh, also, Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams Rooms, uh, choosing the right platform for your space. This is basically uh, a kind of a conceptual thinking, thought leadership, sharing ideas, and, and what kind of things and operational systems and devices we should be. Uh, building on uh, those office rooms. So how do we, what do we use? How do we use them? What do we do with things? I did tell you are leaving the room, so that's good. I'm back. Um, cat demanded attention. No, right? no, no. I was at home alone and I am I am no longer um, alone. Ah, so I thought like I will close the door preemptively to avoid any, any noise. Uh, discover the latest updates on workflows with Microsoft Teams. That's actually really good uh, updates on that side. Uh, workflows, we are introducing workflows via Power Automate. So basically uh, automating things uh, from a business operational perspective. This is actually really, really cool. Uh, so more and more capabilities. Um, and of course, it's Power Automate power capability within Teams. That That is actually really, really cool. Awesome capabilities, features, additional things, automations now available. So awesome, awesome. Nice. 
Upgrade your premier own device rooms, introducing entry-level Microsoft Teams room solutions. Uh, so uh, entry-level basically means a bit cheaper. Uh, so um, making it sure that people are able to use a bit more affordable uh, solutions uh, for the for the rooms. And that's actually really, really cool that we're having a multiple different price points on this. It would be cool to have one of these in home. Hmm. Well, but for you, in my absolutely, room. right? Because like you, all the meetings you've got, now imagine True. that you would be able to have a meeting on your couch. Like you would True. have a couch in your room. True. True. Uh, my room is not big enough now. Uh, we need to move. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> now on the Viva blog, we, there was a blog post related on Viva people's science industry trends on finance. And um, this is basically part of the series. I think we had a people uh i think it was for employees um on the first one and this is more a again in conceptual uh thought leadership uh on on uh, what's actually happening from a financial perspective and considerations uh and industry trends um shared by the viva team so actually really really cool and downloadable pdf which is probably this one so what's actually happening uh within the industry i like the fact that we're getting more on not just technology this is actually good so yeah finally learning that it's not just about the technology it's also about it's the not. other stuff yeah it's not Waldeck. it is not oh. <laughs> so this one uh is from mark cashman and pat mccomb uh, who's the ceo of cloudwell uh a, a basically uh a isv uh, or cloud solution provider and they talk about the power of sharepoint web parts uh, which is actually a really cool uh, concept as well and, and scenarios and and going through what they actually have and how they offer and how they can power capabilities across the different applications and as we can see the same implementation natively supported in microsoft teams as well right ones supported that in everywhere and this is actually really really cool as well so good blog post uh, or the good intra zone blog post uh, with mark and pat so thank you for that. What else is happening? ESBC Amsterdam is happening uh, pretty soon. Uh, you'll be there, want to write, Waldek? Correct, correct. It's November 27 to 30, which is a month away, just a month yeah, away. Yeah, I think one, two, three, four, four weeks. One, two, three, yeah, four, four weeks. Well, today is October so. 30, and yeah. that's going to yeah. end on November 30, so it's four a weeks. month. Four weeks, yes. Uh, 28 days. It's 28 days a month. Well, on average, we've got in a month across the year, 4.3 weeks. So there's that. Is it? OK. okay. On average, so yes. That's, that, then that's 20, a trivia I learned 29.5 days, 29.6 days or something like that yes. in a month. So. There you go, less than a month. Oh my god, I need to prep. <laughs> Sure. Anyway, so a lot of sessions from Microsoft as well, and a lot of uh, sessions from community. So this is going to be a huge. Uh, I think the, the, it's selling really, really well, and there's going to be a lot of people in here, uh, more than 100 uh, presenters, uh, and from uh, 35 presenters on Microsoft led Microsoft presenters, 115 uh, speakers. Okay, 100 sessions. What am I? Why is my my brain is reading something else than what I'm saying? Interesting. More than 100 sessions. From which 35 are Microsoft led. There we go. Now it makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. Thank you. It did all the time. I was like, I'm trying to understand, like, what's your problem with that? Like, what's or maybe where do you struggle? Maybe. With? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere there was a <laughs> confusion in the, <laughs> the like, things fired to different ways. Not, so. <laughs> does not. Oh wait, it does matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cool, but a lot of lot of cool sessions here uh, uh, by multiple people, uh, including Waldek, and uh, Waldek is doing a build for uh, apps for Microsoft Craft. I'm doing a few sessions as well. Apparently, three. Oh my God, I need to start prepping. Wow, good. Uh, should be fine. Um, looking forward. Uh, you also had a blog post, uh, Anatomy of Microsoft Craft Connector. Correct. So it's exactly as the name says. What is a connector? How it works? What are the kind of high level overview things and not really yet code we will get to that eventually but first we wanted to uh talk more about like on conceptual level what is it what does a connector do what are the building blocks basically to give you a better idea what a connector is because there are a lot of uh ideas about what it might be and some of them aren't true so we thought like you know what let's clarify that let's make it really clear what a connector is how it works 
and then we will get to actually the code in the next one that should be should appear somewhere this week Really, really, really cool. Looking forward on that one. Now, this is a blog post from Nami and Daniel around boost your app's visibility and engagement in Microsoft 365. So technically, just recapping the opportunity what we have and how we can build different scenarios and applications uh, within a Microsoft 365 in multiple, multiple uh, options. In this case, it more focused actually on custom, uh, sorry, actions, uh, file actions, uh, which are enabling, uh, enabling you to add, for example, those no, those settings let me zoom in here uh the, the list of the microsoft 365 uh, file listing uh, a bit confusing uh, to be fair and that that is a one technology and then we have a different for library extensibility um, but i think sooner or later we'll get all of this clarified and, and aligned so i'm um, heading to a direction uh, where we built uh, using the standard set of tooling uh, across the stack which is really really cool Good, good, good. Uh, we also had a blog post on update the exchange callback tokens for Outlook add-ins. Um, hmm. That's interesting. Uh, so basically, uh, there's an updating uh, callback tokens. Um, uh, there's an update related on those. And, and starting from January uh, 1st, Outlook settings uh, that rely on an internal format the token will be affected. Uh, so this is most likely related on something what we're seeing. Uh, I, I don't have exact facts, but we're seeing internal changes related on token handling uh, quite significantly in Microsoft 365 um, to increase security. And uh, not that anything has been leaked or there has been any problems with that, but uh, it's, it's better to be proactive. Uh, so we're bumping up the security layer a bit more. Um, and that basically means that you should never ever have a dependency on those internal tokens within your implementation. Um, seems to be exactly the same thing what we're seeing discussed in a few other areas. And then we had a blog post from Anthony Sheeney around co-pilot generated deployment nodes for pipelines are generally available. That's actually really interesting. It is. So technically, summary <laughs> details on the copilot, a copilot generated summary details on what's actually happening uh, within the pipelines and, and how how the implementation is going. This is actually really smart. Uh, this yeah. is really, really cool. Uh, and a cool way of using copilot to create summaries and, mini and, and clarify what's actually happening there. Awesome stuff. Really cool. You've been doing these hackathons as well in the past, right, Valdek? In the past, not this one. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But uh, April Dunan had a blog post on the Microsoft 3, uh, sorry, Power Platform Developer blog uh, announcing the Hack Together Power Platform Global AI Hack Winner. So this one happening early September. And, and basically in this blog post, we go through individual uh, winners. Now, all of these presenters and winners will be also doing a live demo in our weekly community call on Tuesday, starting actually this week. Uh, so Ooh. from... Watch this as a recording. Uh, starting this week, the recording will might be already out, uh, but we'll go through all of these as an individual demos uh, within the Tuesday community call. Uh, should be really, really cool. Cool, a lot of awesome implementations. Um, almost the same as in the Teams hackathon from Spring. There's a lot of like, oh, that's a pretty cool idea. So yeah, a lot yeah. of, lot of ideas really. and innovation over there. And they also had an update on Power Platform command line interface September update. So just resting what's available and what are the updates on that side so a lot of lot of automation options there now this one is so interesting uh, we noticed that there's a new blog uh, sorry new um, documents related on built message extensions using apis uh, can you want to do a quick summary on what this is all about totally right so message extensions allow you to do do things right so in teams you've got the search ones and the actions ones so with search a message extension uh, allows you to search for a content in an external sy system, right? And easily look it up and reference it in message. And there's also one with action where you can take an action, right? So you will have a pop-up form that, that allows you to submit an action from Teams to an external app. Now, if you wanted to build these message extensions in the past, uh, they were backed by a bot. So you would have to build a bot that, that reacts to messages in Teams. And that is kind of how the Teams client communicates with the extension. And then from the bot, you would call out to your API, to your app. This approach is different in a way that it eliminates the bot part. So you basically have a front end in Teams, which is uh, instrumented either uh, through the, uh, the manifest and then connecting directly to your, your API. 
So you hear it right. You no longer need a bot if you choose this approach, right? So it's a really cool, it's a really cool new way. And also like it alleviates you from having to host something on top of your app, right? Because like you have yes. teams, you have your API and that's the only thing you do, right? So you build a Teams package, the, deploy it to catalog. That is it. Like you don't need yep. to run any additional stuff on Azure or any other cloud. So this is a really cool thing. And it's really interesting to be able to see how that's going to affect the amount of apps that people build now that it's so so easy. And obviously, this is still in preview. Yes. But it's really yes. intriguing um, idea and one that significantly simplifies building these apps. So definitely, if you are interested in this space, check it out because it's really, really cool. Yeah, this is actually really, really cool because it simplifies so much the implementation. There's even a tutorial available how you can actually do this one uh, step by step, which is awesome. So you're able to actually make things happen and, and just easily test out things. Um, and obviously, messaging message extensions is also what, well, like, what are the messaging extensions also? Copilot plugins. There we go. There are Copilot plug plugins. And today, or yesterday, or tomorrow, depending on when you're watching the video, on 1st of November, and the, the Copilot is publicly available um, with certain uh, limitations on the on who can actually buy it. But still, it's it's starting to roll out. And with messaging extensions or Microsoft Craft uh, connectors, you can actually extend that Microsoft 365 Copilot with your data on it. And that's actually really, really cool. Now, on the Microsoft 365 Power Platform community blog, there was a few blogs, uh, blog posts here uh, from Adam Wojcik. Uh, Viva Connection Toolkit version 2.1 is now available. Um, it's it's actually really, really cool. Adam is doing a brilliant job on, on uh, leading this effort. And there's other people contributing here as well, behind of the scenes and also in a GitHub. Uh, but it's basically an automation and extension tooling in VS Code for SharePoint framework implementation. So it is actually not just for Microsoft Viva Connection. It also, you can use it in any SharePoint framework uh, implementation. So when you're building Microsoft Teams personal apps and whatever with SPFX, you can actually use this one to increase your productivity. A lot of, lot of awesome features and, and he keeps on adding, and they keep on adding additional capabilities as well. Thank you, Adam. Uh, for coordinating all of this stuff. It's awesome, awesome stuff. There was also a blog post from Louisa Fries on how to use Azure OpenAI with your data in SharePoint libraries. And that's actually really, really interesting uh -huh. as well. Uh, so you have information in the SharePoint library. How can I use Azure OpenAI on top of that? And how, what do I need to do? One step, step by step, quite typical. Where do you store your files? Well, you store your files in SharePoint. So therefore, would it be cool to have a private, secure uh, in, uh, OpenAI chat to ask about the information within your files. Ta-da! Yeah. That's what this is all about. So really, really cool capability. And, and she walks through the steps on how to make that happen and deploy it and use it. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome work as well. Oop, that is a leftover from somewhere else. Now, uh, Paul Bach uh, had a blog post related to Microsoft 365 Copilot and AI resources, a summary uh, blog post for collecting all of the individual resources and documentation which are available around the Microsoft 365 Copilot. I know that Paul has been ha having an early access on the Copilot, so he's clearly super excited. We do, however, also acknowledge the fact that those who haven't had it necessarily access on the Copilot might be like, uh, is it really exciting? Yes, it is. It's actually really exciting, <laughs> but it's, it's hard to first. understand. It's, exactly. It is exciting. <laughs> but it's a bit of an unfair situation as well, that uh, with the employee they're working for, some of the people have been having early access on things. But again, everybody will get access sooner or later. So that should be uh, heading to us right direction. Now, Mark B. Anderson had a blog post on where is my SharePoint site? Ask the AAD and the SharePoint Sync user. Where is my SharePoint site? Ask the AAD to SharePoint Sync user. So basically, uh, where is your personal site? Yeah. Um, because everybody has their own personal site. Um, and then how can we use that? <laughs> uh, and what is the AAD SharePoint app, uh, the mysterious uh, AAD SharePoint Sync user, and how it relates on actually synchronizing and creating the information uh, and the files and the assets and sites behind the scenes? So, <laughs> good. Uh, it's a bit complicated storytelling. Anyway, <laughs> let's not jump on that. <laughs> 
Good. Kasper Larsen uh, had a new blog post on using PMP Modern Search to display today's birthdays. That's a quite typical scenario, isn't it? Yeah. That's a classic Microsoft Graph uh, custom web part. You can actually yeah, use the PMP sure Search web part. When we used uh, People Search on oh, share, yes, share, share, sure. SharePoint for that, like that requirements, like, like I recall building this myself. Yes. So it's yes. that long, that long standing of uh, a, a a concept and yep. there's this interesting thing where in the past it didn't work it worked in a way that it would store the um the so originally i think it worked in a way that it would store the birthday date in the year where you would set it the yep. problem with that was like i had i had a, a colleague who uh, whose birthday birthday was on february 20, 28 <laughs> so he couldn't like he could be, he couldn't uh, set it or he could be because he would right so then i think we uh, updated it to set the date for year 2000 which was a uh what you called it uh uh the yeah whatever the every fourth yeah, exactly. uh, year whatever, yeah what, leap, leap year leap right year. yeah yes yeah yeah so like that allowed him but there was like this weird quirk that and i think um, in in the article we're, we're explaining that in the two that you need to set the year to two thousand even though that isn't obviously the birthday year but that's how it starts start internally yeah. so that it can yeah. accommodate the leap date so apparently 2024 is a leap year so we have february 29th just letting oh yeah although the, yeah so maybe that was 20, 20, 29 9 as opposed to 20, 28 but yeah no, no, I, was kind I, of, yeah yeah, anyway, anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Wartman had a blog post on uh, on connect an open AI chat bot to an internet using Microsoft Bing, API, uh, Bing search API. That's actually really, really interesting as well. So you can actually then con uh, connect and using the in data in the internet on fly to get the information back. And from that uh, live information, then open AI can actually transform that to be uh a human understandable text not just random things uh so that's actually really cool so awesome 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 stuff um really interesting a lot of interesting yeah. stuff i need to start doing testing <laughs> where can <laughs> i get more time i need to have more time well they give me time there you, uh, you have time yes Thank you. Now, uh, April had a, a new video on understanding the AI co-pilots in Microsoft 365 and Power Platform, Copilot Chronicles, episode one. So basically walking through the different uh, options and, and stories, what is available, how they actually work and all that's on. And this one is the high level introduction on this uh, larger episode series. Uh, we'll probably get a new one then cool. this week. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, Shane Young had a use of Power Automate V2 trigger for Power Automate V2 trigger for Power Apps. There is a new tweaker. This is how it works. Yeah. Uh, Paolo had a new blog uh, video <laughs> video on episode 22266 and deleting files and browsing the recycle bin with Microsoft Craft. Quite important thing as well. Whenever you're deleting a file, it goes to the recycle bin. If you need to do uh, restore a, a thing or permanently delete, you need to understand how to do that with Microsoft yeah. Craft. So. And there is also a difference, I believe, or at least there, there was when you use the api when you call yes. delete versus re recycle like one yes. removes it permanently yes. immediately and the other one yes. gives you the the uh, uh, the, uh the same kind of behavior with recycle bin as you would have in the uh ui yep absolutely and it's quite important to know does go yes. recycle bin or does it actually just disappear yeah. so <laughs> Uh, and uh, Zoom Practice Consulting is doing really cool uh, bi-weekly videos and, and, and there are actually open uh, uh, sessions in which they then publish as a recording in YouTube. And this time they talked about the new, new Teams features. Um, so they are Isn't consultants. From the, and last they... week? from the no. the last time? No, this is, no, we didn't, no. Ele I 11 days ago, I think we have. Yeah, I don't think we had it last oh, time. Oh, okay. I don't think we, okay. it's, it's 11 year, 11 days old. But we didn't have it last time. Okay. I don't think okay. we have. Perfect. Perfect. Now I'm actually no, 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 no. no I'm no, second guessing no, myself. <laughs> there you go. You're not I so will certain. I need huh? to go and double check the. the Doesn't the, matter. The, 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 it is the, here. It is here. We're we're it sharing the check. We cover it. We covered yeah, it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Anyway, we're this is really really good. It's so good. We're covering it yes. again. 
Exactly, exactly, precisely. Now, uh, and, uh, uh, Julian and Luca had a, a, a video around how to create SharePoint news email friendly. So technically, when you start creating the news, uh, you have a certain selections now, new selections available, and then you're able to make them email friendly. That will reduce the set of uh, web parts which are available, but then you can actually send the same uh, page as a news uh, email. Let's see if I can actually find it uh, as an example. Please, please, please have an example. There we go. So it's actually sent as an HTML. Uh, no. Commercial. I don't want to see ads. Yes, bad service management. There we go. So it's actually sent as a, a full uh, news directly in email uh, as an alternative way of accessing the information. Really, really cool as well. And then the final thing uh, from uh, Laura Rogers uh, and uh, Jolene Jobson uh, is a Power Virtual Agents and Power Automate Simple Integration Setup uh, from their Power, uh, Power Hour series. Really, really cool. Thank you for that. Back to us. There we go. I don't want to be the first one. You'll be the first one. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Cool. I guess we went through the weekly summary is what is happening. Thank you, Keith, uh, for joining us on the discussion. Uh, really, really cool uh, and good to catch up. A lot of, lot of good information uh, on the background and ideas and tips for everybody how to get to be an MVP and so on. So cool, cool, cool discussion. I guess that's it. Um, I need to start processing and producing this so I can then tomorrow concentrate on taking care of the 20, 11 year olds. I'm Good really luck. I would forward. not want to switch, switch, switch <laughs> yes. with you. Exactly. <clears throat> as I as I told in our chat, I was voluntold uh, that I I I I I'm voluntold that I'm volunteering uh, for this one. It's like, but that, <laughs> okay, you're fine. going to do this. Like, okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You no, know, that there was a risk that the the whole system had to be cancelled uh, because if they cannot get enough parents, and it's like, well, okay, fine, and we're not gonna, of course. We'll try to do that, but yeah. they clearly don't know me if they're considering me as the reliable parents. So, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see how many of them we lose on the food forest. No, just kidding. No, we don't. We're not going to lose any of them. They'll probably say it was the best trip ever. <laughs> yes. We'll see. Cool. I guess that's it for now. So thank you, Alec. And we'll come back within a week. We are already scheduled next week's uh, yes. recording. This is good. This is good. Yes. We're learning. This. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But thank you for this one. Thanks, everybody, for watching. BMP hashtag, BMP Weekly in a Twitter or X if you're still there. We're still there. Uh, and I, I still love Twitter. Twitter is good. Um, it's sad to say that it's a bit slowing down. But hey, maybe it will come back. Who knows? We'll see. Who knows? Hashtag BMP Weekly anyway, and you can follow up also in LinkedIn and in other channels to know when this is coming up. Subscribe to sub uh, the YouTube videos in the YouTube channel or subscribe to the podcast and you'll know when it's available. You can find it in Spotify or Apple and all of that. Wow, it's we're all of the everywhere different these days. Jeez. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but thanks, everybody. We'll be back within a week. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you, folks. See ya. <laughs>